first time like what is even programming like why do i need to know this when i open revit i see a wall i see a window why am i trying to program so to clarify programming is how we speak to computers if you think about how we speak to each other as humans using english or french or spanish or any other language programming is how we speak to the machine and tell it what we want it to do when you see your program open, like the Revit interface, for example, what you're looking at is really the user interface. It's more graphically designed to suit our preferences as humans, but real computer applications on the back end are a series of text-based instructions that someone else has pre-written to tell the Revit application, in this case, what we want it to do. So when you're learning to program, you're really learning to communicate with the software. And for our purposes, we're learning C Sharp for the Revit API. The Revit API is how you access Revit's backend. It's how you tell Revit things you want it to do that maybe the Autodesk manufacturers have not already told it to do. So why are we using C Sharp in the first place? Well, C Sharp, pronounced C Sharp, is an object-oriented programming language that was created by Microsoft using the .NET framework. So a couple of questions there. What is object-oriented programming? What is the .NET framework? Don't worry, I'm going to answer. So the .NET framework is a platform with libraries that will allow you to develop Windows and web apps. A library is like how you would consider a plugin in Revit, for example. Let's say one of the more popular ones like DRoots or PyRevit. It already has a set of tools that you can just access without you yourself having to learn how to make those tools. So in coding, it's kind of the same where some other programmer has identified a set of tools that the people who are going to be working in that language need, and they've created it into a library that you can access so you don't have to go through the process of figuring out those steps for yourself. Now, object-oriented programming is the concept of creating objects that contain both data and methods. So if you think of us as humans, we will have a class that we belong to, which is the human race, hopefully, and we will have our attributes like our names, where we're from, but we also have things that we do like eat or send out mail or drive, which I'm going to get into in the car analogy. So what you do, like the verb, the action words are your methods and what you are, like your adjectives, how to describe you are the properties. So in the context of a car, for example, how the car looks, the color, the brand, properties and features about the car are actually its properties and what the car does like drive reverse go forward go backward these are known as methods every object in the programming realm needs to have properties and methods that control how it behaves and allows the programmer to give it a set of instructions the whole point of oop or object oriented programming is this concept known as dry which is do not repeat yourself now in coding your objective is as much as possible to never have the same sets of code repeating itself if you think about a recipe for cooking let's say you're frying an egg you would break the egg you would whisk the egg you would put some maybe spices in the egg and you would fry the egg these are steps that you could possibly apply to another recipe like say making waffles or making pancakes now, every single time you want to make a waffle or a pancake, you don't want to have to rewrite exactly the same procedures for frying an egg. So you could encapsulate, which is another programming term for grouping a bunch of elements and statements together. You could put that in one object and every single time you want to make that kind of recipe, instead of having to rewrite all of those steps again from scratch, you would just call on the first object and then add to it. So instead of just repeating the steps for frying an egg, you would just call on that object and then you would add, add flour, mix flour, or you could even decide that the process of adding and mixing flour is a separate object. And when you combine both of them, you can decide if you're going to bake that recipe or if you're going to fry that recipe. Now, baking and frying in this context would be methods. So you're starting to get the idea. We're really just telling the computer, this is what we want it to do. And the way we do that is by accessing an object's methods and properties. So OOP makes it possible to create fully reusable applications that you don't have to re redo the steps every single time. And the concept really is that we want the code to run fast and we want the code to be clean. If you think about using Revit, 
Can you imagine if every single time you had to click on a wall or a window, you had to wait at least 10 to 15 minutes for it to rerun the instructions every single time? That would be really frustrating, right? So that's why we have things like objects and libraries and classes so that we have aspects of our code that are already the same, non-repeatable, and they make the code run faster. So this is the hierarchy of the C Sharp code. We have our namespaces, which you can think about like a postal address. So if, for example, two people were living in Toronto, one person lives in St. Clair, another person lives in Spadina. In this case, Toronto would be their namespace and their class, the class of where they live would be Spadina or St. Clair respectively. So you need to think about the namespace, like the grouping of all the classes in your code. So um, the code itself is the blueprint for the object. So we've talked about how objects need to have methods and properties. The class is where you tell the object what kind of methods and properties you want it to have. You tell the car you want it to be able to drive. You tell the car you want it to be able to reverse. And then you indicate what driving means. Driving means you're accelerating forward. Reversing means you're accelerating backward. And then you tell it its properties. I want you to be able to be red. I want you to be able to be um, a SUV or a regular sized car. The class is where you define the object and how it behaves. And then the class needs to have methods, which like I've already explained, these are the instructions of what you want that object to do. So when you've defined your class, anytime you're calling on the object in your code, it already has a predefined set of properties and methods that you can then access. So in a Revit context, we can have a class of, let's say, um, creating sheets, and we want it to be able to make the sheet import a title block, um, customize the content on the title block, for example. We've predefined all those methods and properties in the class. So whenever we call on the sheet object, we can just say sheet.titleBlock or sheet.change project name on title block or something like this. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. It will really get clear as we start to create our own classes. But really, you need to think about this hierarchy of having a namespace that has a bunch of classes. And inside those classes, you're defining a set of rules for how you want your objects to behave. So let's examine this in detail. If you've already been following our coding videos, which I would recommend looking at the C-sharp playlist on this channel, you've probably seen something like this before. So this is known as a collection of C-sharp statements. C-sharp statements are separated by curly brackets, brackets, and semicolons. So looking at this, for example, you have your using directives, which are .NET Framework namespaces of their own, groupings in the .NET Framework on their own. And then you have your own custom namespace, which is where all of your classes will fall under. So if we're building, let's say, a Hello application, and we have a class that's known as Hello, and maybe we have another class that's known as Goodbye, they would all need to be grouped under the namespace of Hello application. Now, your class name is Hello, and you will notice something. All of the code is encapsulated or grouped in curly braces. So everything that's in namespace hello application is in two curly brackets, which the IDE, which in this case for us is Visual Studio, helps you to format this very cleanly so that it's indented. The indentation lets you know which layer of the code you're looking at. So for example, these two curly braces, we will know it's for namespace. These two we know is for the class hello, and these two we know is for this static function that we have here. So that's just a way of you starting to understand when you see a bunch of text and brackets and semicolons, they're really just trying to keep the code organized, reusable and object oriented. So finally, we will have inside our class a method, a static method. In our subsequent videos, we're going to be exploring what the different types of methods in C Sharp are. We're also going to be looking at the data types, so stay tuned for that one. I'm also going to be sharing a cheat sheet to help people who maybe don't want to have to memorize all of this stuff. You just want to copy paste it from somewhere and get started on coding. We're going to be looking at that in the subsequent video. So please subscribe if you haven't already so that you're notified when that one comes up. And finally, we have other methods like right line, which is really telling the application in this case, hello application that we want it to be able to write hello and read the response 
we're gonna go into what the console.write line and console.read line really means in our subsequent videos. So let's examine this a little bit further. We have another code which is similar to the last one where you have your using system, which is your .NET framework namespace. You have the actual namespace for the application you are trying to make, which is hello world, which is encapsulated in curly brackets. And then you have your own class of program, which is also encapsulated in curly brackets. You have your keyword for your method that is a static method. You want it to return a type of void, which we're going to be looking at the data types in the next video. And it's a main method that we want to collect a bunch of strings. So this is one example of an instruction that we're giving to our, our class program and in subsequent times in this namespace where we want to access the program instead of having to rewrite all of this we can just say program dot write line or program dot read line we will just access all of these behaviors that we've already described in the class for the object of program i hope this hasn't confused you too much i promise you with coding a lot of it gets clarified as you actually code but I'm hoping to provide some context on the theory behind some of the things we do as coders. So it starts to get a bit more demystified and you start to feel more in control, like you know what you're doing. So we're going to, in subsequent videos, look at the different methods, how we write classes, why are some of them structured the way they are. One thing I want to mention is that a method usually earns in brackets and the lines within the curly brackets are usually separated by semicolons. These things are very important. Sometimes you create a bunch of code and it's not able to run and you think you've done something wrong. But really what you've done is you didn't include a semicolon or a bracket. This is known as the syntax of programming. Now, C Sharp has its own syntax, which includes the curly brackets, the brackets, the semicolons, the dots. If you were learning a different language, like say Python or JavaScript, the syntax would be different. The syntax is the rules of the language. You can think of it like grammar in our own human language. When you want to say something in English, you use past tense or present tense. You arrange the subject, verb or adjective. When you're saying it in Italian, it's probably a different kind of arrangement. So it's the same thing, learning the syntax is really learning the rules of the language. And this is why whenever you speak to an experienced coder, they tell you that it doesn't matter which language you learn first, as long as you start to learn the concepts of object-oriented programming and solving problems with code, you can really master the syntax of any language very quickly. The concepts of how to solve problems with object orientation remain the same. I hope you found this video helpful. I am hoping you stick around for the next one. I'm going to do my best to increase the frequency of posting these, so don't worry. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm glad you're back. Let's get coding.